So guys, today I want to talk about five money habits for wedding filmmakers. Now I call them habits because if you do them over time, it can really change your life and your business. Now I know money is kind of one of those awkward subjects where we really don't want, like to talk about it, but it's so important that we do because if you get it wrong, it can sabotage your whole business. So let's get into it. So the first one is no debt. Now I'm a huge proponent of this. When you start your company, I would suggest trying to be completely out of debt. And if you're not having a plan to get out of debt, and because debt is one of those things that it can, it just, it just sucks your money every single month. And when I look at some of the most successful companies, they've managed to build the company without debt. And if you can do it without debt, man, you know that your company is gonna be built to last. So the next thing is gear wisdom. Now, don't get me wrong. I like a fancy new gimbal and drone as much as the next filmmaker. But if you're not smart with your gear purchases and kind of have a system in place for making them the best they could possibly be without ruining your financial statement month after month, it can be a big problem. So what I like to do is every single gear purchase, before I make it, I ask myself a question. How does this purchase help me better solve my couple's pain points? Now, if you don't know your couple's pain points, you, you should figure that out. And what I mean by pain points are, why do couples hire you? What pain do you solve? And does this piece of gear solve that? So for example, say I really, really want a new drone. I already have a drone that shoots 4K, but maybe this new drone shoots raw, and it also does 120 FPS, and it also, has a lightsaber attachment. <laughs> I don't know, DJI does some crazy stuff. Okay, let's say this is the new drone. Okay, so what are my couple's unique pain points? So at Forestry, our couples really care about authentic films that are real and honest and intentional. So would 120 FPS really make my films more honest and intentional? Probably not. The lightsaber attachment definitely would make them more, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, so you gotta kind of run through. Does the 4K drone I have, that's enough to hit my couple's pain points. I don't really need these extra features. Same thing with you know a new camera or a new slider or a new lens. Ask yourself, does this solve help better solve my couple's pain points? If the answer is yes, try to make that purchase. If the answer is no, wait. Put it aside, you don't need it. And the next tip I have is in terms of gear is try to buy used if possible. You can save thousands of dollars on gear buying used on Amazon, off eBay, off Craigslist, off wedding forums. I do this all the time. This is a great way to buy gear. You'll save yourself a lot, a lot of money. So the next pro tip I have, and I see wedding filmmakers messing this up a lot, is stretch your computer. You do not, let me repeat, you do not need a computer every two to three years. My goals for my editing computers is I try to stretch them 10 years. It's like a personal, uh, just exciting thing that I need to do. And when I do that, I save so much money. And you might be thinking, David, 10 years, are you kidding me? No, and this is how you do it. So seven to 10 years, I think is a good range. And a great way to just speed up your computer immediately is if you're not using proxies to edit with, oh my goodness, you're missing out. Final Cut has proxies, Premiere has proxies. Just go on YouTube and type in how to use proxies in Final Cut Pro or how to use proxies in Premiere. I thought my computer was done after five years. It was going really slow. I just upgraded to 4K, but then I started editing in proxies and I squeezed another five years out of my computer kind of crazy and so my initial investment however expensive it was really I was able to milk that so I was able to save money year after year after year so stretch your computer and the next thing is you want to have a personal budget just like you do your books in your business I hope you also should do your books in your personal life because us as wedding filmmakers more than likely it's just us or just us and our spouse or maybe one employee but more often than not our business and our personal life in terms of finances are pretty intertwined so you want to make sure your personal budget is on point because that could be a huge leaking point 
for not only your life, but your business. So I would encourage you to get an app where every single month you have a budget, you try to stick with it as best as possible, and every single month review your budget and ask yourself, go through every single thing that you spend money on. This is an exercise I do and say, do I need this? And really sit on it. By doing that month after month after month, what you're going to find is just in doing that after three or four months, you're probably going to save upwards to $500 to $700 a month. Because when I do that exercise, if I haven't done it in a while, there's some pretty big leaks that I'm not aware of. And five to $700, like that's a heck of a lot of money. So get an app. The app that I suggest is Copilot if you are on Apple or an iPhone. It's an amazing, amazing budgeting app. I mean, it's... I've, trust me, I have looked everywhere for a good budgeting app and this one just, it defeats all the competition like by leaps and bounds. And if you're on Android, then you can check out Mint. Mint is also a great budgeting app, but just do something and review it every single month. And the next habit that I encourage you to implement into your life is no car payment. Now this is not as easy as the other ones because a lot of people have car payments, but if you think about it, your car payment is easily two to five to even seven hundred dollars a month. That is a huge money suck. And as a you know individual business owner, it's really not wise to have money sucks like that. So I got you know our Prius online. I think it was like twelve to thirteen thousand dollars, and it was used. I saved like five or six or like eight thousand dollars on our car, and I was able to pay it off. I saved up a ton of money to be able to do that and it was the best decision I ever made. So buy a used car and it doesn't, like I know there's this whole school of thought going around that, you know, well you have to, if you wanna be successful, you have to look successful. So when you're at client meetings, you need to roll up in a brand new, you know, Tesla and that's gonna make them wanna book you. Uh, I mean, in my opinion, if a couple decides to book you based on the car that you're driving and they're not going to book you based on the car that you're driving, I don't, I don't know if those are the type of couples that I want to work with personally. Now, of course, you don't want your car to be a beat up, you know, all disheveled because, yeah, a couple might see that and be like, whoa, if he can't take care of his car and his hygiene, <laughs> like how is he going to deliver a good wedding film? But just... You know, there's so many good used cars online that are nice, that are amazing. Pay that car off, don't do a loan, pay it off, and it's gonna pay massive dividends for your personal life and for your business. All right, guys, well, those are my five money habits for wedding filmmakers. And also, a great money habit <laughs> is to raise your prices. So I actually have a free ebook that you know I just wrote. It's gonna pop up up here, and it helps you raise your prices in a really non-friction way so that you don't lose bookings, your leads don't drop dramatically, and if you use this system, I can guarantee you that in like three or four months, you're gonna have totally different pricing, and just from this ebook alone, I mean, you could be sitting at an extra $1,000 per booking, and it's the exact same system that I used in our company, so I definitely recommend you download that, and also let me know in the comments what are some of your money habits, because I kind of geek out about money. I love finding new apps and new ways to manage it. So let me know in the comments and I'd love to talk with you guys there. All right, well, I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.